Council and we welcome everyone. Uh, for the uh, June 12th uh, meeting, uh, it was out. Aye. 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 and for July 10th. Oh, that's Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I promise not to drone on too long for the mayor's report, but uh, it's been an eventful summer for Barbara and I, <laughs> and, uh, and the water system. So, um, uh, actually, before I put it to that, one thing I did want to highlight from the summer was we did have our, our first ice cream social in a long time uh, in August, and it was great. I think we had around 30 folks who showed up. Uh, but I want to thank uh, Deb and Drew and, and Gail in particular for helping get that organized. That was nice. So uh, then we had a nice turnout for but uh, like just the sort of thing we hope happen in a small town. So thank you for that. Uh, now for the more mundane things of just making the town run, uh, as I think many of you saw on paper or saw as you were driving by, we had uh, you know at the beginning of the summer uh, in July during one of the ends uh, closed periods, we started a process for evaluating the valves and the water system in town, which we had, knew had not been done in a very long period of time. Uh, we made it all the way to the second valve, and then had a problem, uh, a rather dramatic one, uh, which is the, not getting too technical, but the bonnet at the top of the valve, uh, one of the bolts in that broke. It was a problem we knew we had, so it was likely to be encountered with one of the other valves. Um, unfortunately, that led to a, um, when we went to isolate and repair the valve, we realized that we were not able to cut down the flow of water in town low enough to be able to fix the valve. So. Uh, working with the contractors, uh, we were able to um, insert a new valve in the water tank, and we were able to do that without interrupting water service in the town using a wet tap uh, method. Uh, once we did that, we were then able to, you know, some, so we had almost a month there, but we were finally able to, to turn off water entirely in town and repair the valve at Harris Hollow. Um, over the next Couple or between now and Christmas, we're going to schedule to repair two other, replace two other valves in town as we sort of march through this. We're going to do both of those as wet taps so there will not be any interruption of service in town. Uh, after Christmas and sort of quiet time in the middle of winter, I feel sorry for you guys going to dig this hole, but we will do two more uh, valves in town, uh, but those will be the more traditional routes. We will have to I, turn off some of the water service in town to do those two uh, repairs. Uh, but once we got all all those valves replaced, it really sets us up to be able to start marching through a few other valve replacements and repairs in town and be able to really isolate the town. So in the future, when there is a leak, it's not a matter of water in town being on or off. It's a matter of isolating different parts of town to uh, address those leaks. So uh, I think we're on a, on a good path uh, there. Barbara, please correct me or feel free to add on to that. All this not here in the um, uh, let's see. Uh, we are looking into some, uh, some grants, uh, grants for uh, repairs to water systems that will help us pay for that. Uh, but uh, I don't want to steal the thunder of our, uh, our esteemed treasurer talking about finances of the town. But, uh, but we are looking at some options that would uh, help us underwrite those repairs because they're not not uh, for each individual valve. We've been able to manage it within the budget so far. But, you know, I'm happy to have any uh, additional help we can from the, from the Commonwealth or from the federal government to continue that uh, process. Um, I think those were the big things. Um, we, uh, one other thing just to highlight, uh, we will be having another meeting of the Economic Development Authority for the town on the 27th of September. 
I think you've seen it, the announcement in the town emails and in the paper, uh, the call for applications for that. So we hope to have, we've had a few inquiries already. Uh, we look forward to hopefully being able to consider uh, some folks, uh, some businesses at our September meeting. Um, I know Neil, any thoughts on that? So I think that's it for the mayor's report. Um, any? So I'll turn it over to the, the gentle lady to uh, talk about the town's finances. Before you, you have 13 pages that I'm going to go over line by line and <laughs> sit here and admit them. In other words, no, I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> you can read it. Email me, call me if you have any questions on it. Um, I do want to uh, remind you that this is unaudited. And that's, the, that's really a critical part because once the auditors get it, because we're on a cash basis of how we uh, do our books, once they get in there, there might be something that should have been, not should have been, but we may have paid in July, but they want to bill it back to June to mess with our fiscal years and mess, mess with our books. So this is unaudited, but it's pretty close. Anything? Okay. Just a reminder for those folks who are yeah. not usually uh, watching that where our fiscal year ends July. Our fiscal July. year, yeah. July yeah. 1 through, through June. Uh, so that's that. Um, and actually, well, I do have a number of questions because what I did was just go through and see where it was way above or way below. Sure. What we, but I can just email you if that is what you prefer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. I've got, I mean, there are not too many. Sure. Go ahead. Um, general income, which is page two. Um, Barbara helpfully pointed out to me what LGIP stands for. Um, but still, something being 3,666% above the past. You see, this, is, this, is, this is truly incredible. Yeah. Because. Back when we did the, the budget way, way, way back, the interest rate, interest we were getting was like half a percent. It was just not even worth my taking to the numbers. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, thanks to the Federal Reserve, thanks to the Federal Reserve, interest rates kept going up. And I look at these reports and say, no, because I get the statements every month. We can't be getting a thousand dollars worth of interest or whatever it was, and it's incredible. It's all because of the Federal Reserve. The interest rates going up so high. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Do you know what the corpus is that we have in the LGIP? How much? How much funds? Yeah, we have three hundred and ninety-one thousand change. So it's almost four hundred thousand. So that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and we're we're getting there. The we're a third of the way there. We really need to have a year's worth up in there. So the goal is a million plus. The state guidelines is um, six months. I don't think any of us are happy with that. So we're just going to keep filling. If you want to forget to call the LGIP, our scheme mayor calls it a rainy day fund, which I think is much more easier for people. But for the general public, it's, it's, it's like the savings account. It's, it's the local government investment pool. The state of Virginia uh, <coughs> has put this pool together that us small towns with limited resources can invest money. So it's up there for emergencies. And right now, they can a lot of money. So I don't know any of you think you're going to touch it? Uh-uh. <laughs> Um, then on page three, printing, I mean, it was a small amount, it was up 379%. Um, Those were the maps, the okay. walking. Okay. Um, and then my final one was about on page four, consultants, which were up 1,631%. Um, oh, 1,615. We will be reimbursed a good portion of that, correct, Barbara? We have been reimbursed that oh, we do for have. engineering services for mm -hmm. reviewing the Rush River site plan. So we have been reimbursed for those. Okay. That was that was good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, on the water and wastewater, as you all know, and we discussed it, that we are mandated to do an annual review of the water and sewer systems. So Barbara will be commencing on doing a water and sewer assessment and hopefully have it done for our December meeting. The last water assessment was done in January of 2017. The last sewer assessment was done in January of 2022. Now this does not mean that we're going to go, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, we're going to increase this by 5,000 percent or whatever. This is just something we have to review, see where we're at, and it's part of our long-term planning that we really need to look at on an annual basis. So that's far as. Uh, the only other thing I have is that uh, we do need to approve the transfer, the release of the affordable funds so that we can care of those. For those of you who don't know, instead of doing this very lengthy and onerous thing of approving every single bill that comes across the desk, it's only $10 like we used to. We now release funds quarterly out of the budget for um, what we need so that Barbara can just go ahead and pay the bills as, as needed. So if I could make a motion to release the quarterly funds. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? I just had a all, all in favor? Aye. That's good for the treasurer. Mr. Crim. Yes, sir. Uh, two items to report on to you tonight, uh, both regarding Rush River Connellys. Uh, one is the boundary line adjustment package uh, I have now received from the attorneys for Rush River. This is to adjust the boundary line in uh, Rappahannock County. I have not had a chance to review it because it came in right itself preparing for a three day trial, which was last week, and so I'm still digging out from last week. Um, but uh, I let Mr. Goff know that I had gotten a, a draft, and so he's, he acknowledged that and appreciated it there from the party getting it from us. So I hope to have that uh, in good shape for you all to enter next meeting to take action on. Uh, uh, sending it over to the county for their review. Second item I want to uh, talk to you about tonight is with regard to the conservation easement. Uh, I believe the only thing that is still pending from that was a letter from Mr. Geyerson. Uh, and so if that letter has gone out, which I haven't seen, then that, that conservation easement can move forward and uh, be recorded to uh, preserve that area in accordance with I look to report. I'm ready to answer any questions. This is the for the uh, boundary line adjustments. This is the final step before they'll we'll send it off to the panel to review, right? Yeah. Right. It goes to if the county approves it, then it would go to the um, uh, commission on local government, right. and then uh, for approval by three judge panel. And the only reason why we have to go through that much. That many steps is because uh, the county wanted to have a permanent restriction on the rezoning of the property for residential, so that's that necessitated this additional work. Uh, Mr. Garrison's not here this evening, but we have his report in his uh, in the packet. I'm not sure I can comment uh, uh, thoughtfully on the report, but we have any questions. Do you have on stage No, There's a lot of stuff going on. The ARB? Yes. Um, we last month approved um, some really intense changes for the, what is now ours new water, so the outdoor fence as well as the railings on the outside balconies. Um, we also have three applications coming up for our ARB meeting next week, which I think is detailed in the zoning administrator's report. 
And we did have an opening with folks so on the ARB data management line. So we have some applicants for that, which are on the agenda for later. I'll just note he was our secretary, so we'll also be doing a motion to and vote for a new secretary once we have a new uh, member for the ARB. <clears throat> All right, to uh, old business. Uh, steps at 322 Main Street. Uh, it's the biggest update there is the fact that there is a new owner of the property. Um, we are uh, discussing with her what the options are to uh, address that as she looks up the future of that property. So uh, more to follow uh, on that one. We continued. Uh, sidewalk update. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, I had the uh, an opportunity <coughs> to have a, a planning person from VDOT as well as the local the uh, representative come out to Little Washington and we walked the entire length of Warren Avenue. I also invited uh, Mr. Curry, the uh, county administrator, to join us. And we also did a walk around the sidewalks in the town. Um, and uh, as a consequence of all of the uh, utility work and the nature of the property and The, 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 the buffers that VDOT wants to put in to ensure that the thing is properly funded. The cost for this project is going, in their estimation, of between five and eight million dollars. Um, so uh, they, uh, there no longer is going to be a possibility of us getting uh, funding from the TAP uh, for this. Uh, project. This project is going to be too big. Uh, let me give you an example of one of uh, the requirements that VDOT has, which uh, is makes this very difficult, and that is that um, the sidewalk, which would begin at the uh, southeast corner of Gay Street and Warren Avenue, would have to match with the sidewalk on the north. Uh, sorry, the southwest side of Gate Street. Um, there is about a three foot uh, difference in height between the southwest side of the street and the southeast side. VDOT requirements would require that that, that uh, grade come down so that is it equivalent. Um, so the whole sidewalk in front of, uh, on uh, Middle Street, I think that's called, would have to be graded down, and of course you'd have to have the ADA, which is a 5% incline, uh, so they would have to try to do engineering for that, um, and of course then they'll have to have an ADA, which means that they would have to probably cut the hedge out, because the hedge uh, doesn't allow the four feet, I believe it is, that you need for an ADA width. Um, so even in that part, and then obviously a crosswalk there, even that part is, makes it uh, extremely difficult, and it, it just shows some of the, the challenge involved in this whole project. Um, it was very discouraging. Um, there is, I think, um, two ways to go forward. Um, the, the first is to get um, uh, an engineering study, and I'm going to go ahead and pursue a grant to get funding for an engineering study for that and see if that might be able to cut some of the cost down. The other is to make an inquiry as to whether using a private contractor rather than using VDOT might also work to bring the cost down. Since VDOT is looking at this project not occurring on their schedule until near the end of this decade. Um, and so they're building in uh, significant uh, inflation factors in their costs. Um, right. Didn't you say we're on the six years? Yeah, they, they, last time I looked, it was 2028. So, uh, you know, I, I do not want to condemn VDOT. I think they're trying to be very conscientious. I think they're trying to be very forthright. Uh, the people who came out were very honest, and I think were very uh, upfront. And I deeply appreciate all the work that they have done to try to support us in this process. It just is. Uh, what for us lay people seems like a very simple project ends up being much more complicated than we anticipated. Um, 
So those are the two routes that I'm going to go ahead and pursue and, and hopefully have more information um, for the council at the, uh, at the October meeting. Um, in terms of the, uh, the other uh, sidewalks, um, they recommended that we just stay with the sidewalk on the east side of Main Street between Hill Street and Judd, or Jet Street. Uh, rather than go over on the uh, west side. Uh, and then uh, if we do extend, then extend between Jet Street and Porter Street on the west side. So you would have one sidewalk which currently exists and then across the street go, if we go farther south on Main Street. Um, in terms of um, the sidewalk in front of the courthouse, uh, and one of, the, one of the main reasons why I want to have Mr. Curry there while he was not representing the Board of Supervisors, he nevertheless uh, could give some feedback. Um, and they are still, as many of you know, in the process of figuring out what they're going to do with the courthouse. Uh, VDOT did say that if they were to work on it, what they would do is get it down to what they call brush concrete. Um, I don't think they would, uh, they weren't quite, 100% sure, but I don't, I don't think they would necessarily bring it down, which means that the two trees, I don't know, the crab apple or whatever countries would be preserved, um, but they would, uh, they would do brush concrete rather than the brick. So if the brick were to be done, we would have to do that in addition. Uh, Mr. Curry also said that the Board of Supervisors, uh, either through the board itself or through its building committee, is looking at whether they need the door on the back side of the old jail. If they decide that they want to uh, uh, end the use of that, then they would be uh, looking at the possibility of taking down that porch. And if they do that, then it would be possible to have that street go all the way up. Because right now, uh, as any of you who've walked up in that area, it's very hazardous uh, on that, that portion of Porter Street where we have the brick sidewalk. So, um, hopefully we'll get that all resolved in the near future. So, or actually, it won't be resolved in the near future, it's going to be resolved whenever the Board of Supervisors uh, is able to come to some conclusion with the uh, courthouse. And, uh, and we have been doing our efforts to coordinate with them so that we can get a resolution to the sidewalk at that time. And uh, that's my happy news for the <laughs> <clears throat> third option for the board to have sign up to abandon the idea as impractical. Um, yes, I'm sorry. That kind of goes without saying. Oh, and I, and I thank you for vocalizing. <laughs> thank you for vocalizing. Because the only other option we have would be to go to put it on the regular uh, agenda for the VDOT, uh, which would mean that we would then have to pick up 50% of the cost, which, which, which is difficult. So I am in the process of uh, uh, opening up a portal with uh, a local foundation and uh, have talked with uh, people there about getting funding for the trail uh, and have talked with another group. So uh, hopefully I will have some good information, some good news, some truly good news mm -hmm. when we have our October. Who owns the sidewalk in front of the courthouse? Uh, at this point, VDOT is claiming that it's in their right of way. Uh, even though it's about four feet above street level? No, uh, it, it is above street level. Uh, so they have no obligation to repair it? If they repair it, they will repair it with brushed concrete, and which um, we could. I think working with the county, we could answer that now. Uh, the question is, the county may want to preserve it. The county may want to do something different with the whole grounds that they have there. And so they haven't come to a resolution. So um, I'm happy to do whatever the, is the council's pleasure in terms of uh, uh, discussion with VEDA or uh, the council wants to go ahead and move forward with Question if we don't put this on the repair list, uh, I'm perfectly fine. Um, 
with that as well. What is the handicap entrance from the street into the courthouse? I believe it is through the parking lot. It, it is on the back side, it's all around. Any other questions?
other side, the other view, uh, is the only reason between the three that there's a different time. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, he was the mayor before and he was the vice mayor, and they just switched seats. <laughs> um, any other questions, comments about the applicants? I, uh, as has indicated, uh, these are all three good people. Uh, had a chance to meet Terry uh, at our uh, event, uh, neighborhood party, um, back in June, it seems like a year ago. Um, and uh, I, I, I would love to have all three on. Uh, and they all have different experiences and qualities. Um, and. I guess what I would say is uh, I would support Ryan at this time, and Terry, I hope that you would stay around so that we can get you the next time through. So, that's my comments. I also appreciate the fact that Terry wrote a detailed description of what she had done, and her qualifications, and um, I was impressed by that. Specific name, and then we can vote on that. And if it's not a majority, we'll work away to the next one. I'll make a motion that. Oh, second. I make a motion that we appoint Ryan Kraft to the AIB. No, second. All in favor, please, we'll do a roll call vote. Thank you, Leslie. Can I abstain? Yeah, absolutely. I abstain. I'm not sure. Aye. 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 Congratulations, Ryan. Thank you very much. Or condolences. Yes, or condolences. Make sure what you asked for. <laughs> Terry, you know, you know, we will put your name on the list for the next time around. Okay. For this or one we know we've, we've got we've got other we've got other board applications we still have to do. So really appreciate your work. And nothing I can appreciate. Just for Freddie and Stephanie. Uh, the next uh, next item is a very <coughs> mundane uh, addition to one that will ease uh, ease the pain of our town administration. For some years, we've carried the requirement for three signatures to be on the uh, checks for the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, it appears that we are not required to do so. Uh, so, uh, so I'll be moving that we dispense with that requirement and only require two signatures, which is what we require for all other uh, checks that are written by the town. Except, uh, two town officials. And then, so, I second. I don't know, there might be a conflict of interest. Since <laughs> really? I second it. <laughs> <laughs> so do our contractors and uh, yeah, service right. providers, I think. Um, okay, I'll make that motion. Gail, you second. Was there any discussion or questions about it? Okay. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. All right. Then we have a very, very important item, which is that uh, our uh, <coughs> clerk serves for a period, an appointment of four years, and it turns out that those four years have passed remarkably quickly, uh, and that uh, we uh, once again need to uh, thoughtfully consider whether or not we would like to uh, reappoint Barbara as our town clerk for another four-year term. Can you do it for life? <laughs> you want to sign that contract? <laughs> Um, so I'll move. Awesome. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I'm glad to see that the previous administration did get something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think, uh, and I will just take the opportunity before to say that you know, Barbara's been a tremendous partner, at least to me in my time, but before uh, being elected mayor, and certainly in this makes this job possible for me, and I think makes uh, a lot of the progress that we've had uh, we've been able to make in the town in the last four, uh, four years or four and a half years at this point, mm -hmm. uh, three and a half years at this point uh, possible. So Barbara, thank you for your service and uh, this is certainly a well-deserved reappointment. So. And allow me to echo as the former mayor uh, that uh, 
same sentiments that uh, your help, Barbara, on many issues was invaluable and uh, it's been a, a great pleasure to have you here in your role. She's not allowed to leave. <laughs> at least not until you retire. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, well, in that case, I will uh, call for a roll call vote uh, for the reappointment of uh, Barbara Batson for a four year term as our town clerk. And Aye. 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 Congratulations. All right. Uh, now that uh, you know all, all good deeds go don't go unpunished, I also now have to make a motion to appoint Barbara as our we're required to have a FOIA officer. I would uh, I'd like to appoint Barbara for that role. She deals with holding incoming FOIA requests and processes them. Mr. Kremen, comment on that. Oh, I'm so glad you're doing this. I'll see if this happening. He has been our FOIA officer. It makes so much more sense. For Barbara to be our FOIA officer, who can then, if she has issues, can go to our right. attorney. It sets up a process that as it, as it should flow. Yeah, in and I'll second situation. your motion. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll do another roll call vote to appoint uh, Barbara as our FOIA officer. Aye. 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 All right, uh, one last uh, very important uh, question is setting the date for the holiday party uh, this year. It uh, looks like we'll, uh, we are doing the town the parade, uh, which I should provide a little update on that. And Drew, I don't know you're to comment as we go along. Um, the, you know, Drew and myself have both been uh, serving uh, diligently on the uh, uh, Christmas in Little Washington. Uh, Many great, great group of folks together this year. Uh, some updates to provide on that score. One, uh, one I will say that the, the parade's going to be on Sunday, December 3rd. Uh, uh, we will be returning to the traditional parade route uh, for the parade, which I know was a concern of a lot of folks in town. We're happy to see that uh, coming to fruition. Uh, we're going to be reapportioning probably the, the layout a little bit so that uh, Santa will be uh, down at Avon Hall again along with uh, some. Uh, Village of uh, work, uh, workshops, so to, put, so to speak, uh, and some sweets will be the food vendors and uh, other vendors will likely be in town. So, we'll sort of you know, set up a nice, you know, folks can come into town early, and get themselves some lunch or whatever, find their spot on the parade <coughs> route, and, uh, uh, and be present for the parade. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, perfect for Santa. <laughs> <laughs> any, any comments from the uh, yeah, I mean, so we've got food in town, but um, there are some discussion. We had the meeting about an hour before this meeting. Um, and there's a big desire to have members of, of, of the town, uh, especially local businesses, uh, perhaps uh, dress, dress up their storefronts and really get into it. Um, Terry, would love to have you join our committee. Um, for, for, yes, absolutely. Uh, we would really welcome that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, uh, just if we can um, brainstorm activities, um, things, I mean, food will, food will be great, but if there's uh, music, uh, any, anything that can uh, dial up the, the spirit uh, in the town itself so that the focus is more balanced um, this year. The parade will, will go a long way in that regard in the food, but, uh, but that's, that's the goal for this year. And I will also simulate that we'll be shifting the uh, pick up and drop off uh, locations for uh, folks coming to the town for the parade participants, uh, which was another uh, an enormous concern from several residents last year with the drop off. So we've got a good plan for that, but we'll uh, alleviate any uh, pressure on the residents. So, um, anyway, that. That's the update on the Christmas Little Washington. Traditionally, we've held the uh, town uh, holiday party the following Sunday, which would be December 10th. Um, I don't see any reason to deviate from that plan unless there's a um, And then, uh, so that would be the date I would propose is December 10th. I don't vote on that, I don't believe. Um, and then I would, but I would ask for who would be uh, willing to help with uh, set up and break down. Sure. We'll do that. Thank you. Your hand is not in the high mountain. As I learned from the ice cream. Yeah, perhaps. Sure. I'll get what time you've done before. 
If presuming that there's not a, a surge, my, my recommendation is going to be a return to town hall. And to, I've got some creative ideas for arranging the seating in here, perhaps borrowing some round tables from, uh, from some local folks that would be really uh, a nice uh, return and clearing out the pews and setting up. There. So that would be my, my suggestion. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, unless there's a complication. Because you may well be, but yeah. <laughs> The gym takes a lot of decorating. <laughs> yes, it does. It turned out well. It turned out well. It did. It did. When I first walked in there and saw this great empty space, I said, oh, this is going to be horrible. But everyone did a good job. Yeah. You were a terrific job with the centerpieces. Drew you know, jumped in and did the things like garlands on the walls. It was, it was very festive. But it, but it was overcoming. Yeah, that, yeah, it was overcome by the hanger. Okay, well, I think, I think we have a, a set there. I don't know if we go on that any, but uh, we'll put the word out. For 5 o'clock, December 5th, for the time being at Town Hall. December 10th. December 10th. December 10th. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, so reading 5 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that, I will, I, one, I will add one addition to that. We may try to, you know, so organized, try to do a little of that, another little social event in the fall before uh, the holiday party. And then I think since our uh, inaugural celebration went over so well uh, in uh, this past uh, January, we looked to try to do an event around uh, President uh, around George Washington's birthday in February uh, to the vote on. What's that? Um, well, of course, we'll have Halloween in town. But, uh, well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait to talk to uh, see what Trinity. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm happy to stand up on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, with that, uh, we'll open it for the uh, public forum. Yes, sir. Uh, Gary Mitchell, now back in town. Uh, I have a question to put in front of you and uh, a couple concerns. The question is I heard uh, Krim lay out a process for boundary line adjustment. Um, I might have missed it, but is there a requirement for a uh, advertised public hearing before the town can proffer it to the county? Oh, no, no. It's uh, after, after the, the county has indicated that they, they are interested in we'll have the we'll schedule the public hearing. Okay. The public so hearing at some point. That happens before it goes to the, the commission and then to the judges. Yes. Right. Okay. The concerns, and some of them were touched on by the mayor. Um, and I, don't shoot the messenger, although I know many of you have, have good thoughts. Um, it has come to my ear that there are some people in the county talking about the strip mall that's going to be in the town of Washington. And when they asked me about it, I said, it's news to me, I don't know where you put one, but tell me all about it. They said, well, it's West River. So, and I've heard it more than once, and they may just be picking on me because some people uh, think I have a hand in it because I helped with the PUD, and that would be true. Mm -hmm. It would be a wise move, I think, on the part of the council to get ahead of the curve, because what is going to be produced is not what many of us heard talked about. It's not what's in the narrative. It's not what's in the free drawings. And I'm not blaming anyone. I know that when you actually start to build a, yeah, when you start to build a project, uh, you sometimes encounter things that really you couldn't have gotten to until you got there. But the, um, I'll give you a couple examples. The trees, it has three or four places in the narrative the trees are going to be preserved. That, to the extent possible, but it turned out it really wasn't very possible. Um, there are drawings that show a, a, a beautiful uh, meandering creek with rolling green uh, hills, and you know it looks like it's going to be a wonderful place to have a picnic. Well, at least looking back toward town from what will be the boundary line adjustment, that's not going to be possible because of what was required in terms of breeding and everything else. I'm simply saying uh, that when it's built, because of the density of construction, I'm also very concerned, we spent, a, like, I'm looking there because that's where the planning commission's at. Uh, some of you will remember the length of time it took till we could hammer out a compromise on the entry from 211 up Warren Avenue because it's such an important entrance to the town. And the landscaping and the stepping back of that long office uh, block along the road. The architecture I think stays the same, although I'm not absolutely, I'm not sure what's going to happen to the glass um, atrium in the stairway. But the landscaping, the talk about shrubbery, the fact that it might have a little uh, stone wall that would have mimicked what's on the other side, um, 
if you look at where things are currently done, where they're getting ready now to start actually filling out the project, I'm not an engineer, but I'm concerned. And so um, to the extent that, that you all have more knowledge than I do, if everything that was sort of once thought was going to happen with the finished project is still on track, fine, I'm great. I'll wait and see it finished. But we all took a certain amount of uh, hits about our favorite post office. The degree of interest that both county and town people have in built architecture in the town exceeds, I think, almost anywhere else I've ever lived. Uh, but just be aware that what looks like it's emerging may not be exactly what some folks had in mind, and you want to, you want to get ahead of that and explain why. I think there's good explanations for everything. Second, Mayor already touched on it. Um, anytime you have people going to water, you have raised concerns about what's going on. Sounds like you're ahead of that. But when I was up that end, there was serious talk about a second well, and there were serious problems with the um, reservoir that was supposed to be addressed. And that's about the time I left town. Um, I don't know where you are on the second well, but I, I would ask you to think about that. Uh, I don't know where we are about, are we actually gravity-fed system from the reservoir or are we from the pump head? I don't know. But before we get new taps from Rush River, anything that needs to be discovered, anything that needs to be shared with the town, it would be good, again, to be ahead of that because if you bring on new users and something goes wrong, then the argument's going to be, see, we told you you weren't ready to add anything to the system. Seward, so same concern. Um, did, we, did the town ever get an outside objective written assessment of what that facility um, maximum treatment is? I don't know how they measure it. Uh, flushes, I guess, or torque. I don't know. Whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where we are currently, optimal is always about 70, 80 percent. But I've heard all sorts of numbers through the years about what it was built to be, what we were currently at, and what <coughs> happened when Rush River came on. I would just hope that you have, not, not that I have any concerns about current management, but it would be good to have an objective outside engineer send you a letter so that if you ever need to say, look, we did our due diligence, we were sure of what, what we were getting into. Um, the town is changing, and there's lots of comment in the county and in the town about the way the watch has changed in the last few years, pre-COVID, post-COVID. Once Rush River is open, once boundary lines comes up for a public hearing, once things come online, once the inn uh, starts moving again forward, to the extent that the council can be ahead of that curve, have your narrative out there, it makes it easier for the rest of us who want to defend the town and the council than if it looks like it crept up on you or you were hiding things from folks. Done. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? I will take a moment just to, uh, to talk a little bit about some of the things that Mr. Rachel raised. Uh, the record. So I meet relatively routinely with the Rush River uh, folks. Um, there has no, been no deviation in the plan as it was proposed. There may be with the retaining walls and how they eventually match that, that still has to be worked out as they complete the site. Uh, in fact, uh, we I signed off on a plan uh, along with uh, Steve about the um, landscaping, which will actually be slightly improved from what was originally in the drawings that we saw many, many months ago, uh, especially uh, along Legged Lane uh, and in front of the building there. A lot of, a lot of back and forth with VDOT to figure out exactly how extensive the plantings can be um, as you're coming into town, but uh, certainly very, very conscious of that, that particular scenario. But we, we talk routine lasers. Uh, I think I'm not, I'm not aware of any um, current plans or questions about deviating from the, the last set of drawings that we saw before this council or artist renderings, and I don't think the RPD yeah. has had any update that would deviate from that. Just make a comment that Rush River does, when they have the slightest change, comes back to the ARB. For instance, they're one of the applications we're considering next week where they have a slight adjustment on their windows, and they're very conscious. I'm not so concerned changes. about the built environments. I'm glad to hear that yeah. when it's finished, yeah. the landscaping will be as advertised. It will be as advertised for. Uh, That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a I, I know a lot of projects uh, where they will do an artist rendering even before they have gotten to a full um, exploration of what they're going to have on the site. And um, that artist rendering that was done, which incorporated both the part that is in the county that it will be coming into the town, 
uh, was very expensive and very beautiful, and unfortunately it was published um, widely. But unfortunately, uh, that's going to be slightly different than what is on the architectural plans that the council and the public got to see. And I think part of it is that uh, uh, an artist doesn't have an engineering background, uh, and so they draw this beautiful thing. Um, I think what is going to come out is still going to be beautiful. It's going to have the intent of having some public spaces, some walkways. I know that is part of the desire of the uh, of the owner or, or the, the organization that owns the property. Uh, but it's not going to look like an artist rendering. And you are correct on that. But I think that artist rendering was done well before you even had a final sense of what was going to be on that property. But I appreciate your comments, and I'm just somehow we need to let people recognize that an artist rendering is going to be different. The rendering is more dreams, it's an idea, it's a concept. And they said that. But people have, have seen that so much that I'm just concerned that the finished project. Clearly, it's going to be built to plan because all sorts of people are making sure of that. But you just have a public perception that is going to have to be dialed back a little bit. Um, so, admittedly, I went to Bill Cody on town the first morning after they started clearing, and I literally spilled my coffee all over the front of the car. Hope it wasn't so hot. <laughs> I'm surprised, but uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, be, it won't be exactly what was. What one might conjure as an artist, but uh, the planting plans that I've been presented with. I realize they're not in order, but do you have any idea about my conceded date for the who can you? There's all sorts of dates out there in the community. I not not one thing. I've seen that the if you look, it looks like the footers have been set. Right. So that's a very good sign. Well, one is in Geely. Right. Yeah. Ribbon cutting on March 1st. And anytime that someone says, I say, hey, look, we don't know what the winter's going to be like. We don't, there's a lot of uncertainty. Let's not yeah. get people all jacked up about these like, dates specific. But that's out there too. Too early to set a date. Yeah. Uh, and then on the uh, water and uh, the water system, the sewer system, the and I don't have it at my fingertips. Uh, we had previously had a look, a hard look at the sewer system. We are in the process of having a review done of the yeah. water system. Uh, the well is admittedly one of those things that's in our long-term planning, but uh, does not appear to be a critical factor, whereas all these other things that we've been addressing yeah. first, you know, it was the first the meters, then the valves, then we'll, then that's next. The tank's in, in good shape. Uh, some of the work we did this summer allows to isolate that. Uh, in fact, the, the question you had about gravity, uh, it is, we are feeding the town on gravity. Uh, we're using the, the system the way it was designed rather than, uh, than has been the way it's been previously discussed. So uh, we're using the service line to go up to the tank and come down from there. Now, Mr. Mayor, if there's one more thing I can add, just something that you said, the, the question is about the third well. We have two wells now as are required. Uh, the town council's concern is that the two wells may be working off the same aquifer. Are they both the same site? They're near each other, but they're not on the they're exact, not exact same spot. They're not adjacent to each other, but there is an assumption that they may be on the same aquifer, okay. which is why we want to be safe and have third well developed. Thank you. That's that's news to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, so was there anything else, Carrie? Yes. No, and as I said, your comments earlier, these reviews couldn't come at a, a better time because they really will. Um, to the extent that anything, I'm just going to tell you what's out there because they won't always tell you your face. I want you to uh, see. This is just one more piece of evidence that because the county's in the town and if they can't service the county, then the county has to do the next step and, and make noise about how the town should exist because they're not competent to provide water and sewer to the county, perhaps. Now, I won't put any names to those to the comments. Uh, I don't need to. But it's it's a season of elections. It's a season of people training up the people, the folk. So to the extent you guys can have the minutes that these the reviews uh, are being done, that you're on top of it, that the repairs are being made, that, there's, that, that you're fully competent to provide the first two things that you just thought I was to do, water and sewer. 
then you're in good shape. But I've been where you are, and it's very hard when someone comes to a public meeting and starts saying things, especially when you get in the newspaper. I don't know how that happens. But um, then you're kind of on the defensive, and I don't want you ever to be on the defensive. I'm very proud of this town and what the council does. And to the extent I can be an advocate, I want to be. And, and so I just can say enough, get out front, tell your story, set the narrative. And we thank you, sir. So. And I will close the public forum and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, please indicate saying aye. 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 We are adjourned.